You can't tell me those young people don't watch old people. Cause they got that walk down, don't they? If that ain't the wrong way, walk one in. Don't you like that little plant outfit? They are so nice. And we got more plans with the belt and back. And check out the shoes that go with it. And little she is, she got some big old hoopy rays on. You know she's strutting her stuff. Now look at this little thing. She got a smile that won't stop. I see her every day, and every day she got that big old smile on her face. She is happy what she's doing, ladies and gentlemen. Encourage her. Get your hands warm. Encourage her. Yes, yes. Now I know you want your little girl to look like that. Look at those little poops. I guarantee you, she will look so nice and so happy. You see that turn? That's all natural. Then we're going to bring out Dennis. Dennis say, I can't be all done. You know why? Look, I'm going to blow you a kiss. Yeah. That kid is doing his thing. They're going to get his cousin. And she said, yep, I can do it too. I've been seeing her since she was real little. And she gets older, she only gets better. Now look at this green. I like that white green plan. Don't she look cute? Look at all the shoes she got on. If you can't encourage young people, something must be wrong with you. Yeah. You can't tell me to watch those older people because they got that walk down. And that's my baby, right there. Say, yeah, that's me, all day long. Can you tell he's having a good time? Do a spin for him one more time. Do a spin for him. Can you give me one more spin? Oh, that's all right. Now, you can't tell me she ain't got to walk. You can't tell me she ain't got to walk. And she can't strut, who can? Y'all see that strut? Come on now. Encourage the young people. She got a strut that won't quit. That strut will not quit, y'all. You see how they walk? That's where they got them from. That's where they got it from. And this one here, she'll bounce all day long. If she can't strut, nobody can. That's what I'm talking about. That strut is out of this world. Ladies and gentlemen, get your hands warm, encouraging young people. <laughs> DJ. You know what's something about the teens? The teens always bring about a certain flair, a certain fashion. And I want you to DJ, do me a favor. Get this party started, would you? Bring on the teens! Now I'm gonna tell you, they never show stuff. They've been doing this for a long time, and they know exactly what they do. I love my team. I love my team. They always represent. Always represent. I like the outfit. The print. Notice the print, people. They look good, don't they? They are always ready to do their thing in a moment's notice. I cannot say enough about our team. They can be doing something negative, but they are out there doing something positive. And that's what you want to see our team doing, something positive. And you just never know. You might see them Americans next top model. That's right. Look at these people, ladies. The young people are definitely represented. If you don't love our team, something got to be wrong with you. Do you know who we are?
PCCEO, helping people, changing lives for every stage of life. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're featuring music and messages tonight. Uh, a music legend was in Peoria recently. And it's not what you think. It wasn't a singer or a rapper or someone that you may be well known or see on TV. But it was a world-renowned orchestra conductor. And Dr. James DePriest was in Peoria. He's one of the top ten conductors in the world. And he recently spoke to District 150 music students about overcoming barriers as he did, um, even when struck down with polio. Uh, listen to his advice, as well as uh, former NBA stars and local basketball legends, as we continue with JT's Bourbon Street Live. You now are at a point at which you think that you can practically do anything. You don't think about illnesses, you don't think about dying, you don't think about anything except the things you want to do and how much fun you can have in doing them. But once you leave high school, you're going to have many, many challenges that are going to be difficult. And it's not so much what the challenges are, it's how you deal with them and what is going to determine whether you're going to be successful or not. How many of you want to have careers in the arts? All right. How many of you are not necessarily interested in having careers in the arts, but just want to be successful in life? Okay. I, don't, I hope there are no people who are left who don't want to be successful in life. So if you want to be successful in life, the first thing you have to do is to measure what success means. Success is not necessarily tied to how much money you make. When I speak at different schools, regardless of the age, the first thing I'm asked is, how much do you make? And that really is not the question you should be asking. The question you should be asking is, is what you're doing either making you happy, satisfied, and are you contributing to the society of which you're a part? Those are the important questions. It's very difficult to see that now. So if you see a movie star or a football player or somebody who's on television all the time and you find out that that person is making a gazillion dollars, you say, ah, I really want to be that person. Well, that's fine. But if the person is making that much money, somewhere along the line, they have had to work really hard to get to that point. So the first thing to remember is that hard work is a part of building a path to being successful. No shortcuts, nobody giving you something, you have to just work incredibly hard, no matter what it is. Hard work, and then when you come up against an obstacle, you have to persevere. So some people look at an obstacle and say, well, that's a wall between me and what I want to do. There's a barrier there, it's like a brick wall. And other people say, this is a door that happens to be closed, and what I have to do is find a way of opening that door and going through it. So if you're in a hallway and there are a series of doors, and the hallway represents your life, and several of these doors are open, you walk right through and you walk through the next door, and you, suddenly there's a door that's closed. How do you get the door open? And the question is finding the right key within yourself to open that door. So that everybody here, at one time in their life, will incur difficulties. And they may be really serious. And the question is, what do you do? I remember when I was on a State Department tour of the Far East in 1962, which is before most of you were born, 
And I was on this tour and I was conducting and I was making music and giving lectures and doing all kinds of things. And I thought this was the greatest time. I was 22 years old. And within two days, I was in a hospital having contracted polio, could not move my legs, and I had no idea whether I was going to live or not. So that things can change. My mother used to have this great expression, don't let it get good to you. By that she meant when things are going great, when things are going splendidly, or if you're in a situation you say, this is the best time ever. You have to be ready for that time to be over. Because inevitably, it will be over at one point, and you don't know how that happens. You don't know when it's coming, but you have to be prepared for it. So here I am lying in a hospital bed, and I want to be a conductor. Well, how I can't conduct from bed. They're not going to wheel a stretcher on stage and say, okay, here's the orchestra, conduct. So you have to have the will, if you're fortunate enough, you have to have the will to go through that. And that came from a tremendous amount of faith and a very strong family. So you get to a point in which you say, all right, this is something I want to do. How do I go about it? And you take all of the steps that are necessary to get from lying flat on your back and not knowing what's going to happen to you health-wise, you turn that around and you say, it's going to be possible for me to, to build a career. That was absolutely the last thing anybody would say if they saw me at that point. But I didn't see myself in the bed. I didn't see myself defeated. What I saw was a locked door. Not a wall, just a locked door. And I said, I have to find within me the keys to open this door. And I did. And what you have to ask yourselves now, at your age, is what equipment do I have to open the locked doors that I'm going to face in my life? What equipment do I have as a young person? Does it come from my family? Does it come from me? Does it come from friends? That I can rely on when things are not going quite so well. When you can find that, you can use it to overcome the obstacles you're going to face. And it's especially true now which is especially true at your age, when you have all of the energy and enthusiasm that came from your responses when you were introduced, you have to pour that into finding for yourselves ways of coping with your future. You're going to find inevitably, it's going to happen, you're going to find moments at which you just have to stop or be stopped and say, how am I going to get through this? It's, it may happen as early as college. You go to the university and you're encountering exams and a level of expectation that you say, I can't, I can't do this. There has to be something within you that says, yes, I can. Problem solving. Problem solving, even within your individual personal lives, every day, 